Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and I'm really, really happy to bring you this video today. Now, before going into more details, I just want to thank Power Caller for sending the card. Sadly, I won't be able to keep it, of course. Uh, but still, I was the first to test the card, uh, and I got it before the um, before its release. So it's it's really a big thing for me. The first time it happened was with the 6600 XT that was sent by AMD, and was also before the release, and it, it was really really cool. So thank you a lot once again. As for this video, we have indeed the review of the Power Caller Red Devil 69 RX 6950 XT, okay? Which is the most powerful AMD card, or at least the most powerful gaming card from AMD so far. Also, if you don't know, the 6950 XT is basically a refresh of the 6900 XT, okay? Uh, but with higher VRAM frequencies, okay? The stock frequency on the 6900 XT is 2000, while the stock frequency on the 6950 XT is 2200, okay? It's a nice thing to have, and in some scenarios, it will indeed improve the performance. Since this is a review, we'll have several topics, for example, the usual comparisons, in this case, in 11 games. So 11 games tested with the averages in the end, okay, for every resolution. And also, since this is a review, I'm putting all my cards, all the cards that I had retested before, they are also in the results, okay? From the 580 to the 6950 XT, okay? That, I think that's, that's a new thing and I, and I think you will enjoy it. After that, I'll also show you a bit about thermals, power draw um, and performance in terms of overclocking and revolting and stock performance, okay? Since this is a review, I just wanted to add a bit more data, okay? So without any further delays, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and let's go to the results right after the sponsor of today's video. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. For the first game, we have Gears 5 using Ultra settings. Since this is a review, I added all the cards that I had retested so far to bring more data to the table. At 1080p, we have a massive difference of 40 average FPS in between the 6700 XT and the 6800. And you see the 6950 XT actually performing really close to the 6800, but it is just because we're CPU bottlenecked. As soon as we raise the resolution to 1440p, the difference appears, with the 6950 XT pushing almost 160 average FPS, while the 6800 barely pushes 125. And actually going to 4K just highlights the difference even more, with the 6800 pushing 66 average FPS, while the 6950 XT goes up to almost 88, which may not seem much, but it is a big difference at 4K. Horizon Zero Dawn is another game that it is heavier on the CPU than most people think. And once again, we have a CPU bottleneck at 1080p. And I really think the only CPU that wouldn't bottleneck so far would be the 5800X 3D, which I do not own. But still, we can see the 6950 XT pushing around 200 average FPS, while the 6800 manages only 162. Once again, the resolution goes up and the bottleneck disappears, or at least gets shortened, and we get 177 average FPS, while the 6800 doesn't even reach 140, and the 6700 XT stays below 110. At 4K we have no bottlenecks and we see the 6950 XT delivering us over 20 average FPS more than the 6800. This boosted by smart access memory, of course, but the same applies to the 6800 almost 100 average FPS at 4K Ultra. Impressive. A 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another title that favors AMD cards and smart access memory, and that's why we see that at 1080p even the RX 6600 beats the RTX 3060. As for the 6950 XT, we also get a considerable performance boost from SAM, even though we're a bit CPU bottlenecked, but still smashing the RX 6800. At 1440p this card can achieve 135 average FPS at very high settings, which is quite impressive, with the 6800 still holding its own with a very respectable 110. At 4K anything below the 6800 isn't able to achieve 60 average FPS and the 6950 XT achieves 80, with Sam doing almost nothing at this resolution. And the ones that see it happen. Remedy's control it is using the X12 and high settings. This is a really GPU dependent title and even here we were a bit CPU bottlenecked. Still, it's in this game where the difference in between the 6800 and the 6950 XT stands out more so far, with a difference of 50 average FPS. At 1440p where we are in CPU bottlenecked, we still have the 6950 XT almost 40 average FPS over the 6800, which is insane for a game like Control. And at 4K, well, the trend continues, with the 6800 not even reaching 60 average FPS, while the 6950 XT is comfortably over 77, and that makes a huge difference in terms of gameplay smoothness, at least for my trained eye. In Red Dead Redemption 2, using high settings and Vulkan API, we can see that minimums are bad, going as low as 35, but when activating SAM, they ramp up immediately to almost 100. This is not a thing happening solely to the 6950 XT, but also for all AMD cards, where SAM raises the minimum values by quite a lot, as you can see in my previous GPU comparisons. Raising the resolution a bit, the 6950 XT is still the best performer, as it obviously should be, but this time the minimums aren't much higher than the ones presented with the RX 6800. Although when we talk about averages, the 6950 XT pushes 31 FPS more. At 4K the tendency is the same and even only using high settings, the 6950 XT won't even reach 90 average FPS with the 6800 hovering around 73 and the 6700 XT not even reaching 60. It is what it is. Forza Horizon 5 is a title played by hundreds of thousands and it couldn't be missing here. At 1080p even the 6700 XT with SAM can surpass the results of the 6950 XT without it. That's how much different smart access memory does in this game. And after activating SAM on the 6950 XT, we have a boost of around 40 average FPS, but still being only 23 average FPS over the 6800 which is not that much, but at 1440p the difference of 23 average FPS gets maintained, but still we're talking about lower numbers so the percentage difference is higher. This time with the 6950 XT actually getting higher 1% lows with SAM than averages without it. But it is only at 4K that the 6950 XT shows its true power, delivering more 1% lows than the 6800 delivers on averages. And of course, with the 6500 XT showing its crappiness by delivering us a beautiful PowerPoint presentation with 7 frames per second, <laughs> which equals less than half of what the RX 580 delivers. My god. Let's move on. Proceed to customs without undue delay. Cyberpunk 2077 is without a doubt one of the heaviest games we have so far. This of course inside the games that are not insanely badly mega ultra craply optimized. And although it may not be that heavy at 1080p since the 6950 XT is pushing over 220 average FPS, 
and while being CPU bottlenecked, of course, it is really heavy when raising the resolution. At 1440p, we get a decrease from 220 to 142 average FPS, with even the 6800 being considerably slower. And at 4K, it gets even worse, with the 6950 XT struggling to go over 60 average FPS and with the 6800 barely reaching 50. And of course, with most mid tier cards struggling to get even 20 average FPS, even with only high settings. Move around a bit to make sure you didn't break anything. So, if you're new to my channel, I test Call of Duty Warzone in the orientation mission since we're testing GPUs. And in normal gameplay, most people will be hardly CPU and RAM bottlenecked, so I picked the orientation mission to see how much FPS these GPUs could push in this game engine. Starting with 1080p, we see a big difference in between the 6800 and the 6950 XT. In this case, over 43 average FPS, with smart access memory doing virtually nothing. At 1440p, the 6950 XT can still push over 238 FPS here, with even the RX 580 pushing 70 average FPS. And at 4K, the scaling is the same, with the 6950 XT being considerably faster, and anything below the 6600 XT not being able to push 60 average FPS at 4K. Getting closer to the final line, we have Rainbow Six Siege using Vulcan and Ultra settings. As you see, the FPS difference in between the 6800 and the 6950 XT isn't that much at 1080p, and that's because the 6950 XT is so powerful that we ran again into a CPU bottleneck. But as soon as we go to 1440p, the difference becomes day and night, with the 6950 XT pushing 107 average FPS more than the 6800. At 4K things aren't much different, with the 6950 XT pushing over 200 average FPS, the 6800 at around 160 and the 5600 XT actually delivering more frames than the RX 6600. Interesting results. God of War couldn't be missing in today's video, not because you don't want it to be missing, but because I do. I don't give a shit about you. <laughs> no, seriously, I really wanted to bring this title for all the God of War fans. At 1080p we have one of the biggest differences so far, with the 6950 XT pushing more FPS in the 1% lows than the 6800 on averages. And that's insane. At 1440p, the 6950 XT just keeps smashing the other cards. Now with a bigger lead over the 6800, and with the 6800 also having a bigger lead over the 6700 XT. At 1440p ultra wide, all cards perform decently well with high settings, and the mighty 6500 XT manages to once again be behind the RX 580 and the 5500 XT, which is quite laughable to say at least. Still, decent results for almost all cards. The last game tested is Resident Evil Village in its last mission with the maximum settings available apart from ray tracing. In here, overclocking the VRAM on this card actually helps quite a bit, and using SAM pushes the results even further, with some CPU bottleneck in the mix, of course. At 1440p, the RX 6800 gets once again less averages than the 6950 XT has on 1% lows, and by 25 FPS, which is nothing less than insane. Also, even at 1440p, we see once again both the RX 580 and the 5500 XT demolishing the 6500 XT. At 4K, the 6950 XT is the only card pushing way above 100 FPS, with the 6800 staying a bit below that, and anything below the 6700 XT not even reaching 60 average FPS. Now, before going to the overclocking and undervolting part, we have the 10 games averages, where even at 1080p we see the 6950 XT comfortably leading, as it is supposed to, and the 6800 having a very good margin over the 6700 XT, and the 6500 XT struggling to surpass the old and gold RX 580. 
At 1440p, the 6950 XT gains some more ground due to no CPU bottlenecking, and the 6500 XT gets bear hugged by the RX 580 and surpassed by the 5500 XT. At 4K, the 6500 XT and their 65-bit buzz just gets demolished by the RX 580 and even more by the 5500 XT, with the 6950 XT maintaining its comfortable lead over the other cards, as obviously intended. So guys, now we've seen the results, but results in terms of performance aren't all that matters. For many people, price performance is also a thing, and mostly, um, performance per watt is also a thing. And that's why I'm gonna show you some stock, overclocked and undervolt results to show you how much it makes a difference in terms of thermals, in, ther in terms of power draw with side-by-side -side comparisons, okay? In games like Cyberpunk, um, games like AC Valhalla and so on, okay? Let's go into it. So, as you can see in terms of performance and power draw, we have some real interesting data here. At stock, the card is pulling around 325 watts, while the full overclock will raise it to almost 400 watts. Although, underclocking the core frequency by only 100 MHz, increasing the VRAM by 200, and decreasing the voltage from 1.2 to 1.04 volts, will chop off almost 100 watts, while maintaining virtually the same performance, putting it on par with the RX 6800 in terms of power draw, while performing way better, which is insane. Although taking into consideration that the underclock and undervolt profile isn't 100% stable, and is here mostly to show how low this GPU can go in terms of power draw. Most games will work fine, but games like AC Valhalla will immediately crash before even starting. And that's why I bring you Control instead of AC Valhalla, because I think that the issue is actually with how the drivers so far handle the offset voltages, because the tendency is to crash on games that usually consume lower power, but not on the ones that are really GPU heavy. Which doesn't make much sense. In here my settings are actually pulling a bit more power than stock, but also performing considerably better, with even the underclock slash undervolt profile consuming around 80 watts less than stock, and this time providing higher values. Overall we can see that it is certainly worth underclocking and undervolting, since we get a huge decrease in power draw while maintaining the same performance, or in some cases even higher. It's a win-win situation if you ask me. Let's go to the conclusion. So, so, so guys, hope you really enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these results because it is really important for me because I really want to know what you think about this card, if it is really worth it or not. Also, I do know, like I stated several times across the, the results, I do know that my Ryzen 5600X is bottlenecking this card because this card is a freaking monster but even the 5900x or the 5800x would still be bottlenecking uh, quite a lot and even the 12th gen intel cpus even the 12900ks would still be bottlenecking a bit okay even more at 1080p so well look more into the 1440p and even more in the 4k results if you want to see actual data but i wanted to include 1080p results because not all games were definitely bottlenecked at 1080p okay just most of them also don't forget if you want more data on the 6950xt i also have more videos on this okay i have this video for example of 25 games on the 6950xt and, of course, the Ryzen 5 5600X, 25 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, so gameplays, okay, like usual, and we also have this video of the unboxing, if you want to watch how the card looks, what the card has in terms of, of inputs, outputs, and so on, so on, so on, okay? Um, basically, these are the two videos that will be released with the review, so if you want to watch them, they are available right now, okay? Thanks a lot, and see you in the next video, my guys. Yeah.